That's my friend Sadie. We just got her a couple weeks ago at the Humane Society. She is a very good girl, but she has a very bad habit other than being a little OCD with the ball. Sadie likes to bolt. She'll take off down the driveway, just go. I don't have the money and I don't have the physical space to put up a fence. So I have what I think is a good alternative for a little Miss Sadie here, and that is an invisible fence. Okay, this one that I bought is from PetSafe. It's an in-ground radio fence system. It costs about 150 bucks. It comes with a whole bunch of wire that I have to bury in the ground, about two inches deep. That's a lot of labor. Uh, it's got this little unit here that I hook into, the flags that I'll use to mark the area with, and then, of course, the collar. The first thing we have to do is to determine the pattern of our system. If you've got a nice square lot, it's pretty easy. But in this case, I don't have a nice square lot, so I have to run out to the area I want the fence to be and then run back to the transceiving unit, which is in my shop. If you get to a point where there's a gravel driveway or a gravel walkway, you need to put the wire in PVC pipe. In the directions, they, they mention using a garden hose. Don't do that. It's really hard to feed this stuff through a garden hose. You'll go insane, get upset, and cause strife in your marriage. Okay, now it's time to put the wire into the trench. Again, we want to put this in about two inches. Here's another neat little thing. I actually invented this. I call it the Schmidtkinator. I, I took a little quarter inch piece of stick and I rounded it off and I made a little groove here to help push the wire down in here. I created this stick! My biggest problem is my cat who just happens to love little red wires. Okay, to give you a little neon light to hook up between the diodes on the collar, that's how you test to see if it works. You get close, see, there it goes off. That shows us that our boundary oh, is about three or four feet out from each wire run here. So when our dog gets in this area, this should start a corrective shock, as it were. Of course, you all knew this was inevitable. That's right, I'm not gonna try anything on my dog. I'm not willing to try myself. I'm a dog, woof, woof. I'm gonna run down the driveway and get hit by a semi. Oh, what are these fires? Oh, God, Jesus. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, God, that hurt. Oh, what are these fires? Oh, God, Jesus. <laughs> oh. Okay, I think we're done with this story now. Oh, God. I wouldn't really do this at home. That's what they pay me for, to do stupid things for you. You know, they always told me I had an electric personality. To be serious though, a uh, lot of instructions in this puppy on what to do after you've got it installed. The one thing they say to never do is don't just hook it up, put the collar on your dog and throw him or her in there. A lot of training so they get used to knowing where the shocking zone 